Hi sisters, I'm James Charles. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe for more content on Paper's YouTube channel. When I started doing this, I truly just did this because I love doing art, but as I kind of started growing more and more followers over time, I realized, oh, there's like a lot more to this than I originally had anticipated. Because I think every kid, especially nowadays, grows up wanting to be a YouTuber, wanting to be an Instagram celebrity or a social media star. Um, and it seems like it's all fun and games. It's just easy to look pretty. And this may be true, while the job isn't always physically demanding, on a mental note, it, there's so much that you have to be thinking about at all times. Hi sisters, James Charles here in New York City with Paper Magazine. All right, you guys, so as you can see, I already have my base already on, but we thought it'd be really fun to just add a little bit of a fun pop, I already said fun. But first of all, I'm gonna pop off these eyelashes. There's no better feeling in the entire world. And I'm going to pick up my brand new James Charles X Morphe. Can you see this from this camera angle? Is this good? Is this fresh? Oh, there she is. Look at that. I, as a kid, was someone who never really suffered with like a lot of um, anxiety or anything like that. But through growing up on social media, it's definitely developed, which sucks to say, but I've found different ways to cope with everything. Oh. Vanna could never, never. I think I want to do like a blue halo eye because I haven't done that in quite a long time. I'm just feeling a little bit adventurous today. When everything was going on, um, I was a course across the world in Australia, which I think was like a blessing and a curse in a way. Um, it was a blessing because I was in a beautiful place and had a beautiful view and had something beautiful to look at during such a dark and ugly time. Um, I was also surrounded by my team and a few close friends, which really, really helped. Uh, and my manager actually took my phone for two weeks straight, which was scary in itself because I'm obviously on social media all the time and on my phone all the time. So having that kind of outside world disconnected and cut off was definitely very hard for me but at the same time I think was so important because I literally wasn't watching anything going on. I have had a lot of different beauty icons and artists that I've looked up to over my career but I definitely would say that the artists that I respect and love the most are those who can do what I truly am not capable of and that is like simple glam to just look like myself but better. Just like how do I explain this like does that make sense? Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Being a member of the LGBTQ plus community, I obviously want to be a role model for my young fans and want to be an advocate in every single way that I possibly can. So when everything kind of went down, it was a really horrifying moment. Obviously, personally for me, because I knew that it was not true in any way, shape, or form. But I was also scared for the community as a whole, because what that statement implies is that gay men are all predatory, which is disgusting, not true, and very dangerous to put out there. It's been a narrative that has been used time and time and time again, and it's not something that represents our community. And it's really scary that that became the narrative of the entire situation. Um, the reality is, is that the the hookup, if you will, that was being discussed was completely consensual and was with a boy who told me he was bisexual and later on told the world he was bisexual. And therefore, there's nothing wrong with that. And the reality also is, is that a lot of times, whether people be gay or straight or somewhere on the spectrum in between, it is very normal to experiment with your sexuality and fluidity and just see like what you're really into. So when the palette launched, I obviously was watching all my reviews and trying to figure out what people liked, what people didn't like, because I think it's really, really important to get constructive criticism and feedback and use that to your advantage when it comes to your next launch, whether it be another collab or maybe my own brand in the future. If I am sitting here until I'm 70 years old blending my eyeshadow and filming tutorials, please, somebody, unplug my camera and kick me out. Like, do something about it, because I can't. Like I said, I do get bored really easily, so I'm always someone who likes to try new things, explore new avenues, try out new career paths, whatever it may be. I wanted to take a little bit of a risk and kind of revamp the original and release the same colors. 
and just add the changes that people were requesting. So we made it half the size and we added a mirror. So it is super, super travel friendly. And it's also um, much less expensive as well. So for the everyday makeup user, um, it's going to be only $23 when you use code James for 10% off, which you can and should use. And don't forget to use code James for 10%. Oh, wait. And don't forget to use code James for 10% off. Being honored with the opportunity to be the first male face of CoverGirl was such an iconic and cool moment that literally will go down in history. And I don't say that to be obnoxious. And I say that because recently there's been an influx of tweets from kids tweet me photos of um, history books and different like articles that they've been studying for school talking about CoverGirl, which is like, for me, that is like the epitome of like, oh, I've made it. I've done something positive in the world and that makes my heart like skip a thousand beats. If you want something that's easier on the go and if you want the same beautiful colors in a much more small, compact size, she's here, she's amazing. And she's coming to a, a makeup counter near you soon. That was an infomercial. You're welcome for that. So what is dating like now? Oh, it's terrible. It, it was hard before, but now it's like really bad, which sucks. It, yeah, after everything happened, pretty much everyone that I've literally ever communicated with, whether it be a full on like week long little fling or a simple, hiya, you're cute in the Instagram DMs, came out and started saying that I was talking to them, um, which just created a whole spectacle of me which really sucked it was really frustrating because dating is a normal experience that a lot of people go through and it's something that I have not gotten the chance to go through um, because there was not a lot of other out gay kids in my high school and when I left high school I grew into social media following so then it was even harder and it came with a whole other set of complications that made dating a little bit more impossible so I'm not actively looking but if something comes along unfortunately with my job like I said there are so many blessings with it but with those blessings come a lot of people that see those blessings as an opportunity for themselves to either come up or get financial gain or get followers or attention or take me down with them, which has been attempted. So I'm just careful awesome. and lonely. <laughs> Moisturizer is like my number one I was gonna say beauty secret, but it's not a secret. Like everyone knows to use moisturizer. I hope everyone knows to use moisturizer. Moisturize your skin, people. It's very, very important. 10 out of 10 would recommend. Just keeping it really, really simple. Foundation, concealer, powder, lock it all in place. Contour, highlight, blush, brows, eyeshadow, lips, call it a day. Um, it, I guess like my, my takeaway from what happened in May is that you never truly know who like your real friends are um, and that you should just be grateful for the little things in life. Um, I was already so close to my like family and my like super, super close friends before everything went down, but literally losing millions and millions of subscribers and losing a lot of other friends that I once thought I was so close to in the community um, within literally minutes over false accusations really showed me who the true people in my life were and how to really judge somebody on, and their character. Um, I didn't really struggle with a lot of mental health issues growing up. I've always been a very, very outgoing and happy kid, but through being on social media, unfortunately, a lot of those issues have since developed. Um, which of course sucks. Um, it, I like I said, I'm not mentally in a place where I want to be. Um, and what's even harder to kind of swallow is that it's been six months since all the drama happened in May. Um, and I thought by this time I'd be completely good, back to normal, if you will, super happy. And that's not the case. And I think that just goes to show, like, no matter what you have, no matter who you're surrounded with, um, like, these issues are very, very real and can affect somebody, unfortunately. It, the cyberbullying and hate trains and bandwagon stuff is so, 
there's no other word to describe it other than just toxic. It's so toxic. It's behavior that should not be tolerated. And I think that it's so easy to forget that like when you're tweeting these people, like there's a real person behind the other screen that's looking at that. And although you may think they have millions and millions of followers and your opinion means nothing and you just want to put it out there because you're like feeling angry in that moment or you feel like you just like need your opinion to be heard, like there's a good chance that they could see that and you never know what that is going to do. It could truly push someone over the edge. We're really quickly getting to a point where the cyberbullying and the bandwagon hating and the cancel culture is just getting stronger and stronger and people are having fun with this. And that is probably the most horrifying thing to actually say. And I really hope that it doesn't take somebody doing something dangerous to themselves, like a major public figure or a celebrity or an influencer to show people like these words have consequences because they do. And I can say firsthand it, it they got to me. And like I said, I was so grateful to be surrounded by really close friends and family that were checking on me all day long, every single day, in the middle of the night, every 10 minutes to make sure I didn't do something that I could never take back. So, that's all I got on that before I start crying and mess up this blue eyeshadow that I just took two hours on. All right, you guys, so we're pretty much finished creating this little blue halo smoky eye today. I feel like it matches the denim so perfectly. I love how this look turned out. I just touched up my highlighter. I'm gonna add one last spritz of setting spray just to lock it all in place because this makeup look has been on for far too many hours now and I'm starting to look a little bit crusty and I think it's time to answer more questions at a closer up angle, which is a little bit scary, but you know what? It's gonna be fun.